Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm Per Nolén, CEO of Wind Research, and we are a public biotech company with a drug candidate in clinical phase two for colon cancer. A disclaimer. Uh, the goal of Wind Research is to reduce mortality in colon cancer by reducing metastasis. And colon cancer is a very large indication, is one of the greatest killers, but in fact, mortality is quite low as long as it's localized. Once it's metastasized, it's very poor, with a very low five-year survival. So clearly a medical need to reduce metastasis, and our strategy in this, to this end is the WINT pathway, or more specifically, WINT 5A. WINT 5A is an endogenous protein that protects against cancer. It reduces detachment of cells, so reduces spread of cancer cells. It reduces invasion into healthy tissue, and it also reduces the number of cancer stem cells. And the expression of WIND5A differs quite a lot between tumors. If the expression is low, well, then you have a very poor prognosis. You release more cancer cells, more metastasis, and a shorter lifespan. If it's high, the opposite is true, less metastasis, and a better prognosis. So obviously, we would like to increase WIND 5A, and there are clinical data supporting this. Here is a study demonstrating the difference in survival between colon cancer patients with low WIND 5A in tumors versus high WIND 5A. And you can see with the red arrow, sorry, that's not the pointer, that's quite a dramatic difference, from about five years to about 10 years. So you want to increase WIND 5A, Unfortunately, WIND5A is not druggable. It's a large, sticky protein, very poor pharmaceutical properties. So, but we found a solution, uh, FOXY5, which is a short fragment of WIND5A, retaining all the positive effects and also much better pharmaceutical properties. It's been brought into development and into clinical phase two. The clinical phase two trial was initiated and then paused. And I'd just like to give you some background. And it was due to some promising but unexpected findings. But first, some background on the study. It's 127 patients. It's a randomized trial, FOXY5 versus standard of care. And it's localized colon cancer. And the end point here was to look for relapse in cancer. It was paused for two reasons. The first is that after three weeks at the time of surgery, we identified a quite significant effect on the tumors. And also, it was observed that the, the study was clearly underpowered to demonstrate relapse after two years. So how is a study of 127 patients underpowered? Well, let's look at the design here. We start with the diagnosis, time zero, then they are starting treatment with FOXY5 or get standard of care, which usually is no treatment. After about three, four weeks, there is surgery, complete resection of the tumors. You remember this is localized colon cancer. The surgery has a high probability to cure the patients. But we look for relapses, which do occur uh, up to two years. The problem was there were very few patients relapsing. So clearly we needed a much, much larger study for a longer time. But on the other hand, after three weeks, there was clear effect in the study. Let's look at that data, because it's quite amazing. First of all, there is reduced local invasion along nerves. This is a very common way for cancer to spread along uh, infiltrating nerves. And you can see there's quite a dramatic difference. For more than 40% in the control group, there is 50 patients in the control group, and then there is 50 patients in the FOXY5 treated group, and it's dramatically lower after treatment with FOXY5. And the same was found for vascular invasion. And here it's an even bigger difference. And vascular invasion, just to put this data into context, this is a histological analysis. But this is very much comparable to what you see after chemotherapy. First-line chemotherapy for six weeks, a very large trial was conducted to demonstrate effect before surgery, and our data is actually clearly stronger. For th after three weeks of FOXY5. So here it seems to be a very significant effect. It's highly significant and clinically relevant. The study has been redesigned. 
Now the focus is just to look at three weeks and to concentrate on what happened before and up to surgery. Again, it's localized colon cancer, 80 patients, 40 plus 40. So it's a randomized trial. Again, it's blinded, so assessments will be blinded. Uh, treatment duration, three to four weeks, so that is at, until they do surgery. And of course, we want to look at the histology, but most importantly, we have also added radiology. So we can look for actual effects on tumor size, which is most important here. Design is very simple. Diagnosis, treatment three weeks, surgery, and then a follow-up, which is just to show that it's safe. So a very fast and short study. And this study will basically determine the fate of the company. We have already started. We have increased the dose, a dose escalation part. First, four milligram, that's a double the dose, and then to eight milligram, which is four times, plus we have increased the frequency to increase uh, the drug load. Dose has been selected, it was found safe, and we have uh, started the expansion phase. And we reported a couple of weeks ago that we included the first handful of patients and uh, recruitment is continuing. So uh, this study, we have uh, met our uh, milestones this year and the next milestone is a critical milestone. Towards Q4, we plan to present our first uh, efficacy analysis. It will be a subpopulation of patients, but still it will basically determine whether we continue the trial or close down the company. Given the data we have, we think there's a high likelihood that we will get positive data, but that remains to be demonstrated. The full data will be presented end of next year, and uh, we obviously, based on the initial efficacy analysis, hope to uh, identify partners. It should be interesting for a partner. It's a very large patient segment. There are today no treatments approved for neoadjuvant before surgery in colon cancer, in localized colon cancer. So if it works, it will take a very large market share and it could be significant sales. And quite obviously, if it works in colon cancer, it has a high probability of working in other similar situations, including breast cancer, prostate cancer, and rectal cancer. So just to conclude, we want to reduce mortality in colon cancer by preventing metastasis. To that end, we have a WIND5A mimetic, FOXY5, and we already have data from clinical trials, randomized clinical trials of more than 100 patients, demonstrating a very fast effect on tumors in these patients. We have a study, phase two study ongoing, to confirm the data. And if it shows what we want to show, we think there is a very attractive case for a partner. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Pat. Um, so you, you started as a CEO here at Wind Research not too long ago. Uh, what are your thoughts on the FOXY5 project? What, what, a, what attracted you the most about this project? Uh, first of all, it has objective clinical data. I think uh, there's a lot of promise in biotech, but here we have objective data. It's randomized and it has been assessed in a blinding fashion. So the histological data, although it's not clinical efficacy, it's very correlated to clinical efficacy. So I find that, that very intriguing. Uh, I think the other part is uh, the sort of the binary situation the company is. We have, it's a single drug com company. We have this product. We have to show effect. If it, there's no effect, that's the end of it. If there's a good effect, that's, well, celebration, and we go forward. <laughs> uh, well, uh Related to that, uh, somebody would like to know what happens to the company, single asset, if the study fails? Yeah, basically we will liquidate the company. Yeah. There are no backups today. Um, uh, Foxy5, I believe, was also in clinical development 10 years ago. What does the pan when does the patent expire? Well, the first patent expires in uh, 28, but there has been a new patent filed and that expires in 41. So we actually have very good cover for the product uh, for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. um, what are your personal thoughts on the ongoing phase two study? My personal thoughts? Well, I mean, recruitment is key here and uh, it's always uh, a challenge. Uh, we have started recruitment, it looks fine. We are not up to full speed yet. Uh, we have uh, sites, in uh, a dozen sites or so in uh, Spain. 
and uh, then we have a handful of sites in Hungary. They are still uh, discussing the terms of their agreements. We haven't got them fully up and running yet in Hungary, uh, but uh, we expect them to be in uh, active recruitment stage in within a month or so. Mm -hmm. uh, but Spain is up and running all sites, so it's uh, going pretty well. It can be even faster, and that's, of course, essential if we want to uh, be able to present data at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. What's your strategy to speed things up a little bit? Well, it's uh, to meet the investigators and uh, I was down last week and so was our clinical uh, <coughs> head of the clinic and uh, we're down in uh, March and we will go down again in June uh, and meet them again at the ESMO GI uh, end of June. Mm -hmm. So we try to meet them as often as they can handle it. <laughs> Well, speaking of meetings, uh, could you elaborate a little on your partnering strategy and how that is going? Yes, the partnering strategy is quite simple at this point in time. We, we have very interesting data. It's firm data and uh, partners, they want to see it, but it's not uh, conclusive enough and it's not clinical endpoints. So it's not enough to actually strike a partnership at this time. <laughs> Uh, if we can confirm the data and also sh demonstrate which it should be coupled to a distinct reduction on CT, on radiology, mm -hmm. then they are definitely e eager to continue. So there is uh, many, many companies that have seen the data and want to meet us again if we get positive data. Mm -hmm. Well, you just mentioned radiology and that you're measuring tumor size, correct? Is yes. That's the, well, why is that so, so important here? Uh, because tumor size is clearly coupled to relapse and tumor size is also what guides uh, at the time of surgery you look at tumor size and then you decide whether it's uh, T3, T4, how big it is, how much it has penetrated through the intestine that decides on if you will get <coughs> chemotherapy, how long you will get it or not. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically it has a direct correlation to if you get six months of chemotherapy or not which is one endpoint you can look at mm -hmm. of course. Good. Um, that's all the questions for today. But thank you so much, Pat, for your presentation and answering the questions. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. <clears throat>